If you would, take your Bibles and go with me to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 15. Praise the Lord. Chapter 6. It said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying in the foundation, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. And the doctrine of the baptism are laying on hands of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Paul said it's time we just get ready and get things straightened out and go on and live, do better. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost have tasted the word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, now this means falling away don't mean sinning or backsliding. The falling away means that you apostate. You say there's nothing to it no more. And you go out and you say there's nothing to what you're doing. There's no more chance for you. Now, that's just scripture. So I'll let you know what it means. We'll go on so you don't get up mixed up about it. Said if they fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified of themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh out upon it bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected as nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance and hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, surely, surely, blessings I will bless thee, and multiply will I multiply thee. And everybody said, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained a promise. And I want to use that verse for my title of my message, and I want to make it a sure foundation of our lives. And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Sure foundation of our lives. Amen. Everything is shaking right now. But we need stability in an unstable world. You need stability. There are people leaning to drugs and alcohol and uh, everything else but turning their lives over to God. Promise here is a similitude of the foundation, the promise. Abraham received something that he could stand on, that he could count on, the blessings of God. And that was the foundation of his life, was the blessings from God. Something we build our lives upon. A promise is an announcement for information. Assent or pledge, in this case especially, a divine assurance of good. God has given us a divine assurance that good will come to our lives. Because we are the children of Abraham. We're under the promise. We're under the promise of God. A foundation is something you put down like a substruction of a building, literally or figuratively foundation. We had this in motion when growing up as children. Work. Do right. People told us. Give us information. Work and do right. And you'll go do good in life. And I remember I was worked at the sawmill for my dad. That was my first job, but I wasn't, hadn't graduated from high school. Brother Jerry's dad, Brother Blake, he was uh, off bear of the cutoff, and Ernest Spangler, he was a sawyer. And I went to work that one Monday morning, I walked out, and he said, boy, you going to work around here? I said, yeah, I planned on it. He said, well, you work around me, you work hard and fast and do a man's job. And so that's what God is trying to tell us, amen. And I learned that day, I got enough information from that day's work. I'm going back to school. I'm going to really learn. I, I'm going in there, and I'm not going to go in there and be slothful no more like the Bible, like Paul said. Don't be slothful. 
I said, I'm going back to school. I'm not going to be slow for it. I made straight A's after that. I said, because I don't want to make no living on, at the sawmill. <laughs> I want to go somewhere, Ellie. After I graduate, I want to get out of Dodge. I'm going to be followers. Paul said, be followers of them that does it. And so I said, after that, I'm, going, I'm on my way to Richmond or Lone Oak or somewhere. I'm getting out of this country, out of Dodge, amen, because I'm going somewhere where I can make a living. Well, I found out, hallelujah, that that wasn't just so because I had to patiently wait. I didn't get a good job at first. I went down there, and I mean, it was just grub work. But I found out when I patiently waited, and I kept waiting I finally got to the place where God began to bless me when I was happy with what God gave me hallelujah I'd done the things and patiently waited for it God really blessed me hallelujah I've been blessed hallelujah over and above but I'd always go in smiling hallelujah amen even though I hated the thing amen praise the Lord I know God hallelujah was able to do it but after we had endured we we got the promise brother Jerry after you we and every one of a lot of old people in here, praise the Lord, have endured. But the promise came. God has blessed us. When we serve God, God will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. He will bless you. He gives us a promise. No, I found out I'm not going to work at no zombie. I said, that's not a living for me. That first day broke me in good. Apostle Paul stated to us about salvation, that you be not slowful, but follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So that's what we need to do. Look at the forefathers. Look at Apostle Paul. Look at that he could stand at the end. I'm ready, hallelujah, to be offered up, hallelujah. Amen. I know there's a crown of right. I'm ready to go, hallelujah. Amen. Pray, Lord. When you get in your heart, you don't care, hallelujah. There are a lot of people afraid to die, but I'm not afraid to die because I know there's something greater for me, hallelujah. I know, I got, oh, he done put something. I've said in heavenly places, I know there's something better, hallelujah, than what's down here, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. No, I know the old flesh wants to stay here, but as Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh, hallelujah, is at the heart. Praise God, I'm shot up of Kutaya. Hallelujah. Yeah, I graduated and got out of here. But through faith, patience, I ain't heard the promise. But the information that I received through the years became my foundation of life. As I watched others work, and I watched that, it wasn't in words a lot of times, it was just as I watched people. That's why Jesus said to be the light of the world, be the salt of the earth. Sometimes somebody says something to you, but they don't speak it in words. You see it in their life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I've seen others, how that they prospered. Amen. I've seen others, how they failed. I've seen people that turned up to be drunkards, and I looked out say, and their life was miserable. Hallelujah. They lost their children. They lost their homes. They lost their families. Lost all these things. And I learned, hallelujah. Amen. There was enough information out there to let you look out and see why go do such a thing as they're doing hallelujah because you're going to end up in the same place that they're at hallelujah. and so praise God it's t- yes praise God oh hallelujah I'd rather be shouting the streets of glory brother jury hallelujah praise the Lord God said he'd bless us hallelujah he told me, my Abraham he said with blessings I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you well God has done that for me in my life hallelujah. brother Jerry people says well, I look and say I don't know no way how to well, I know a way Jesus said I'm the way <laughs> he's the only way amen praise the Lord there's a sure foundation for your life but through faith and patience inherit the promises. All that information, like I said, built a foundation for me. The scriptures I just read in Hebrews, the Apostle Paul gave us good information. He also said, said you follow me as I follow Christ. But scripture says, um, ever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. 
I've seen, I've preached to people, I've talked to people, and tell them what to do, amen, and keep on. And Brother Mark, hallelujah, it just seems like they're hell-bent on going, doing what they want to do. They're not going to do, hallelujah, what you tell them to, and they can't learn, hallelujah. They've got to go and learn by experience than example. I've learned by experience, and I've also learned by example. And I'd rather learn by example than experience. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. I just tore a Tahoe. Sitting up there, I got it torn to, looks like a thousand pieces, to find a leak in the air conditioning line. And which I should have done was stuck the back wheel off of it and the <laughs> line around the wheel well, and I'd have seen what was wrong with it right then. But here I go into all that stuff. I got to put it all back together. That's experience. That's good experience. Hard rock experience. I wish somebody would come along and said, Hey, brother, you don't have to do that. Just take that wheel off there. And them lines just go right straight up there in the back. But they went up over the wheel well, and I thought, Well, they're going right up into the trunk. So I just pulled the seats and uphold. Ripped it all out. <laughs> no, you can do something because you've got information to live by. But you, if you don't go to church, you ain't going to learn nothing. But you've got to go where truth is preached for you to learn something. Amen, hallelujah, amen. If you don't go where truth is preached, you're never going to know nothing. You'll be ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But if somebody tells you the truth, don't do that. I've done that before, and I got hurt by it. You better listen to it. Hallelujah. Amen. My son had a car, and he went to school in Nashville. I guess it was Nashville, somewhere down there. Anyway, he had a, a fifth gear went out on it. And so, hear me, I just looked at more. Well, get that transmission out there. Just look at observing, you know. Get that transmission out there. That whole front end's got to come out of that car. So here I go and tear the whole front end on. That's a big job you pull the front end out of a Dodge Omni. <laughs> and when I got through and looked at it, I could have tucked the front wheel off and tucked four bolts off, pulled the box off, put it back on because it was something they added extra to it, a fifth gear. Experience again. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you something. I don't care going through hard things down here. But, brother, I don't want to go through the things that the devil's got laid up for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want to leave out of here. I don't want to learn what hell is by experience. It. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want no part of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. I've seen people living here on, in this life. They've had enough hell in this life not to face the next. And hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So surely, praise God, we better, we better open up our eyes and our minds and our hearts, hallelujah. We need a foundation to stand on, hallelujah. No matter what comes along, hallelujah, we can stand when everything else is falling apart. We still got our right mind, Sister Brenda, hallelujah, and we're stable. We need some stability in this world today, in the families, in the home. Children messed up because of unstable people, unstable parents. Got nobody to look to. When the schools are crooked and the laws is crooked and everything else is crooked, where are they going to turn to? You need a church, somebody that will preach the truth. Somebody that where they can take them and get a foundation how they, that their lives how they, can be straightened out and they can walk upright in this life. Shame on you if you don't take your children to church. Shame on you. Jeremiah prophesied or preached to Israel, not only as individuals but as nation. But through his 38 years of ministry, there wasn't one soul saved. Looking at his life, you'd think he was a failure. But he wasn't a failure. It was the people that didn't listen to him as a failure. They're the ones that suffered. Yeah, they put him in prison, down in a cistern. Up there in Mar, because mud 
The Bible says one man went to him and said, listen, Jeremiah died down there. Let's get him out of there. And the Bible said they went and took old claws and stuck down the hole and drug him up out of there. Brought him into the kingdom of Aaron. The Bible said, amen, at the end of it, the captain of the guard gave him victuals. Told him to go wherever he wanted to go. But he also gave him a reward, which means a bonus. Hallelujah. Amen. God picked you up out of the mire clay. He set your foot on a rock. He established your goings. Hallelujah. Amen. He just didn't give you, hallelujah, something to eat. He gave you a bonus. Hallelujah. He gave you a right mind. He gave you, hallelujah, strength. He gave, oh, if I can stand a shout today, it's because God gave me a bonus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the doctors didn't give me a chance. But God gave me a bonus. Hallelujah. You get beyond the eight years of 70, you got a bonus. Yeah, God said he give you three score and ten. That's why I shout. I've been six years over that. Just month. And I thank God for it. Y'all forgive me for my long hair. I didn't even want to leave home. <laughs> I was ashamed almost. I usually, I used to be on the road. I'd get my hair cut, you know, out there. I got home, had stayed away from home for as long, brother. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I don't even want to go over to the mailbox. I wish they'd put a barber shop up there in Peace Creek. <laughs> I love home down here. How much are you going to love home up there? How much are you going to love home up there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They come to Jeremiah. They'd ask Jeremiah questions. What about Jeremiah? Should we stay here? Egypt was a type of the world. And they'd ask Jeremiah, should we stay here? Jeremiah said, are you going to listen to me when I tell you what to do? Oh, I, we swear. We swear we're going we're to listen to it. We're going to do it this time. I've heard so many people. I'm going to really do it this time. I'm coming in church. I'm going to really do it this time. This time I'm going to serve God. Something bad happened in their lives, hallelujah. Children get messed up and everything. Now, we're going to start really going to church. We're going to be faithful. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, just like I don't know. I mean, that's a shame. But Jeremiah told them, Now, I'll, I'll pray. I'll seek God for you. I'm praying for people right now. Sometimes I just... Because I've got so many good people to pray for that wants to do right. And you say you're going to spend time on them when you don't even try to, I mean, don't even give an effort to do it. But I still got to keep praying for them because I'm a minister. Hallelujah. Amen. You just got to still keep praying for them. Hallelujah. There's something in there that won't, this won't let you quit, Brother Clark. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad it is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But what I'm trying to say is, and Jeremiah prayed eight days. Come back and give them the thing. They said, oh, your statements are false. We're going back to the world, going back to Egypt. Uh, he said, okay, if you go, you can take, there are two ways. He'd always tell them there are two ways, two directions you can go. Go what the Lord says and be safe. Do what you want to do, and you'll end up killed, Famines, trouble, pestilence. And that's what they done. They ended up every time dead or either in a place where they wished it was dead. And that's just the way it is. It's like I told you, it's so... I remember, and I've told this quite a few times, but I remember something God just laid down my heart, my first cousin, and I went to see her, and she's getting ready to go to Michigan. There are three little girl, two little girls... And I went over and I begged her. I said, please, I feel of God, don't go. There's something wrong about you going up there. 
Nothing to her but go. She left, and on her way back, they hit a guardrail. She is sitting in the front seat. The guardrail come through the front of the car. Cut to one little kid's little girls, just little girls, cut the back of her head off. Went through the back seat, in the back seat, and killed the other girl and cut her leg off. I'm going to tell you something. You better listen to God's word. I didn't drive on my way to Princeton for nothing. And I told her that when I did. I said, I didn't come over here for nothing. I said, God has sent me over here. And I said, you better not make that trip. But she's been on it. She's going to make it anyway. How many times do you think she wished she hadn't made that trip? Like me pulling that. It was nothing for me pulling that whole front end out of that car to that. She's got, she had something to live with the rest of her life. No leg, one leg. Amen. Praise the Lord. Two children killed and all that. Listen, church. Amen. We serve a good God. Yes, we do. But we serve a God of justice. Hallelujah. We serve a God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That he knows how to put you in place. He can straighten you up. Hallelujah. Amen. And he'll do. The Bible says he chastises those that he loves. If God gets on you, hallelujah, that's because he loves you, Tanya. Hallelujah. Don't get, don't get angry when God comes down on you. Hallelujah. Stand up and praise the Lord and say he still loves me. Hallelujah. God still loves me. Praise the Lord. I got a sure foundation that I can stand on. We can praise God. They wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. They end up where they're going to be. Get a word from the Lord for me. I've had so many people get a word from the Lord. But you give them that. And God told Jeremiah, now Jeremiah was living amongst the Israelites, but they was in captivity and bondage. And Egypt took them into bondage. And if we look at it, like I said, Egypt was type of the world. Israel was type of the church. So God told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to take stones here in this land at Pharaoh's house. There in the gateway that goes in, I want you to take them stones and I want you to place them in that brickland of where it is. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Now, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't serving God, but he was a servant. God's got some sinners out there, servants, that's doing his will. He's got people out there, amen, it's tearing up havoc and he's letting them happen. That's why you better serve God. And so... He put them stones in there. And he said, I want you to let Judah, all of Judah, watch you put them in there. Because I want them to know what's going to happen. This is a hidden foundation. This is going to be the throne of Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to set up a royal pavilion all over this. And he's going to wipe them Egyptians. What he don't kill, how he's going to take them, put in captivity. He said, be sword for sword, death for death, captivity for captivity. He said, this is going to happen. He said, but I have hidden a foundation. Listen, hallelujah, when you get saved, God has got a hidden foundation for you. He's got a rock. Hallelujah. And that rock followed them through the wilderness. Hallelujah. They wondered what that rock was. God, hallelujah. He's got a foundation for you. Hallelujah. That can keep you out of the world. You can be in the world, but not of the world. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory to God for a hidden foundation. Somewhere I can plant my feet when I'm sick. I know I'm going to come out of it because I got a foundation that tells me that God is a healer. Woo, brother Mark. I can shout. Hallelujah. When I'm in trouble, I got to deliver. When I'm sick, I got a healer. Oh, hallelujah. You got something. You got a foundation that you can stand on. I'm talking about a sure foundation. Sure foundation of our life. I 
I'm glad God hit a few rocks up there in Peach Creek. Hey, two brothers, you're here. If you, he hit me and you a rock, didn't he? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. 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 Put them down there. Hide them rocks. Nebuchadnezzar is going to come here and set up a throne. And here's the great part about it. This is just like the scriptures I was telling you that I read to you. The scripture said that he would come in, Nebuchadnezzar would come in and do his work. He'd slay, put captivity. Then he would put on his royal robe, garment, and he would walk out in peace. Ain't that like a church? We're living, hallelujah. Amen. We got a foundation. One day we're fighting down here for our lives, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, you go through troubles and trials, but you're going to come out. You got a promise. You're going to come out. You're going to come out, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we got a promise. Hallelujah. And that one day we're going to put on that robe. Hallelujah. Amen. One day, hallelujah. And we're going to leave away from here. We're going to, why, hell fire and brimstone coming down here. We're going out in peace. Hallelujah. We're going to leave here in peace. Praise the Lord. We're going to put on that red pie rope. Ain't it good, sister? Hallelujah. Keep a sound mind. I got hope. I'm not like those without no hope. Now, whether Job said, though he slay me, I'll trust him anyhow. The Bible said that church was back in the wilderness. That's our foundation. Thomas done preaching. I said, Thomas, going to get right on my stuff. Him and Dwayne, I was up on this rock. I build my church. Thank God for a good church. Thank God for a good church. Thank God, Brother Thomas. Thank God for a good church. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have to remind you, he built this church here. He built this church. I sure did. I didn't have the money to do it. Didn't have the ability. Didn't have. Brother, if our lives had had it as easy as this church did. Well, I've had it about as easy as this church. Why don't you look up? I mean, I mean, we give away thousands and thousands of dollars. Comes back. I don't beg nobody. I ain't never asked y'all for a dollar or a dime. Comes back. I always let God lead me in what to do. It's like I said, you manufacture it, you'll pay for it. But if he manufactures it, he'll pay for it. I mean, you know, it's so dumb. I was sitting down in Kentucky at a motel listening to the television. The news was on. They had that share on there. And y'all know I done told you about them helmets for the and people in, going, my son, 150 soldier boys going over to Afghanistan or Iraq, Iraq. And God just spoke to me and said, buy them them helmet liners. Oh, good Lord, I'm a man of faith. And that spirit just kept saying, buy them them helmet liners. And so I didn't know what to cost. I didn't know nothing about it. I got trained to look into it. I told the church about it. And I said, I'm, I, Lord, lay down and do it. And when we found out, it was $10,200, $300. I can't remember what it was, something like that. So we get sent prayer cloths. They even let them have the prayer cloths. We send them for safety. 
we sent them a prayer cloth. All 150, we sent 150 of our tracks with a prayer cloth and an anointed and sent them to them. And all 150 of those come back safe. There's over in the first of the battle of Iraq. All 150 of my son come back safe. Don't tell me God don't work. Hallelujah. Amen. God is real. You stand on the foundation that he set you on. And the very next Sunday, I heard that one week, during the middle of the week, they had got them. They called me and told me they got the helmet liners in. And that next Sunday, which people just give money to John what they want to give, and I looked up there and I was a preacher and I turned around and looked. And on the board, used to be a board over where that green tab that's sitting up there. It was $10,600 that day. <laughs> My God, look at that. I told y'all. You manufactured, you'll pay for it. He manufactured, he'll pay for it. I said, that's $400 almost more than we paid for it. I said, hallelujah. Amen, praise the Lord. Listen, oh, we got a sure foundation that you can stand on. Hallelujah. Have health, have wealth. Hallelujah. Be blessed, be prosperous. Church, I'm, I'm getting ready. To, I, I got a lot to preach about, but I let me just don't leave nothing out to get here. God was saying here, He said, I have hid. He's going to set up His throne, going to spread His royal pavilion over them. God was saying, I've set up a foundation. He's going to smite the world. This sounds like the end of time. It was for them Egyptians. All Egypt, from death to death, captivity to captivity, sword. And I will kindle a fire in the house of Egypt. God doesn't tell him he's going to kindle a fire down here. It's going to be a fire. I will destroy all. He said, I'm coming. I'm going to destroy every image, all the false gods. There ain't going to be none left. And I'm going to tell you when Jesus comes back, there ain't going to be no false gods left, tell you. Just like I said, every knee's going to bow. And Brother Thomas Dunn said, every tongue's going to fess, tell you, that Jesus Christ is Lord. There ain't going to be but one God. And the scripture said, Nebuchadnezzar, he shall go forth. From thence in peace, he will put on that robe. And he's going to destroy Egypt, just like God's going to destroy the world. The Bible said that rock, the stone that was hewed out of the mountainside, that they saw a stone, has now become the chief cornerstone. Jesus, we're, that's what we stand on. That rock, they said they smoked in the wilderness, that rock was Christ. That rock that followed them through the wilderness. That rock was Christ. That was what was keeping them. That's what fed them. Amen. That brought in the quail and brought in all the other things and everything. And with a cloud of pillar by day to keep the sun off of them. And a pillar far by night to light up and kept a space in between them and their enemy. You know, safeties of the Lord... Well, I'm a good driver. I ain't never had a wreck. If you ain't had a wreck, God's drove you around all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I don't care what you say. God's had his hand on you. I've had plenty of them. But I got out of them. Thank God he brought me out. <laughs> yeah, almost every one of them I should have been killed. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> but he was showing me I'm still around. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to shut up here just in a minute. I title my message a sure foundation. In 2 Timothy, Apostle Paul stated concerning the truth. Some have erred, saying the resurrection's already paid. Just anything that you turn the doctrine around. But Paul said, and said they've overthrown the faith of some. It's funny to me how some people can get turned around so easy. 
But Paul says, nevertheless, but how be it? The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his, hallelujah. God knows your name, hallelujah. God knows him and him, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Just look up and say, I thank you, Jesus, for knowing my name. I thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I know your name, but I'm glad you know my name, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord that you look after me. Oh, praise God. Come on, get ready to sing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you want a sound mind, the Bible said he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. God didn't make us paupers. Hallelujah. He blessed us. He said that blessings I'll bless you and multiply. I will multiply you. Hallelujah. Amen. He don't want us. God don't want no sick people. When he brought them out of Egypt, what the Bible said, they all come out loaded up. Took everything out of the world. Out of Egypt. And there wasn't a sick one among them. Well, I, that tells me we come out of the world and we, we're out of that sickness stage. Yeah, I've been sick, yeah. But I'm going to tell you, I'm learning to trust him more. I'm learning to lean on him more. Hallelujah. I'm learning how to lean. Amen. Praise <laughs> We got a lot better yet. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, it just feels like you hit the lottery. <laughs> Amen. The Word of God tells you, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise God. I'd rather have this than hit the lottery. Amen. I can go home, lay down in the bed, peace. Knowing that my God is with me. I got, I got a lot more, but I'm going to leave it at that. I think you've got enough understanding of it. Don't let Satan make a drug addict out of you. Alcoholic. I got family. God don't touch. There's no hope. All I can tell them is there's a foundation. There's a place where they can get if they get out of that. That they can stand where there is a way. He's the way, the truth. If Brother Thomas done filled you full of who he was. I don't need to tell you who he was. He done told you. Thank God the message would go together. But he's the foundation of your life. And I want to tell you something. If you, go, if you stand on that foundation, right if you start right today, I'm saying this. Just out of faith. I believe today God wouldn't give us this message for nothing. I believe you stand on it today and from this day forward, hallelujah, we are the children of Abraham. We're covered. Up. The Bible said the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children. Everything in that book is for us. Healing is for us. Deliverance is for us. Everything, praise God. I believe you start today. Really get on that rock. Really get in church. Really get in church. You find out what God can do for you. Brother Junior, how, God, how good has God been to you? Wonderful. Yeah. I could speak all day long, and I still can't tell you how good God's been to me. He's been a blessing to me. He's brought me out of stuff that I could not even imagine he could brought me out of. I'm going to say this. I was in an old coal truck up at Beckley, Cold City. You know where it's at. It was pouring down snow, and it was icy. And the truck started sliding backwards, and all it was was a cliff. I said, Dear Jesus, please stop this truck. I was going over it. He stopped it. Then it wouldn't take off. I said, Lord, please help me get back up this hill. And it took right back off. I mean, I know it was Lord because I was heading over that cliff. There's no doubt in my mind. Jerry's been up there where I was at. It was straight down. I could go on and on. God's wonderful. But, I mean, you've trusted God, Junior. You're just an old country boy like me. Not no highly. Graduated the ninth grade. <laughs> no, I mean, and he makes a good living. 
God's good to him. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Bible, that's what the Bible, follow them. That's what it said, follow them. I can't brag on him enough. Brother Jerry, look at Brother Jerry. He's just old Willie Country Boys. <laughs> 